So this is day two of the turbo install. We finally managed to find the right turbo. So we had a huge, huge array of selections. So after a lot of research and trial and error, because what happens is when you're in the middle of installing something, it cannot always go by the online research. You have to understand what is available at hand. So we had one clarity that we needed a maximum boost of 1.4 bar which is the safe limit for the internals of this vehicle. So we wanted to go with something around 1.2 to 1.3 bar at max. And the other thing that was clear was we need a wastegate. We cannot do a turbo without a wastegate. So like in a lot of OEM applications and bigger vehicles, they do run uh, turbos without a wastegate. But we needed a wastegated turbo. So we managed to get our hands on a Garrett 5001. So this is currently in service in India in a lot of Bharat Benz trucks. It is uh, commonly found in above 4 liter engines. So the displacement of air is ideal and it can be logged at 1.2 to 1.3 bar. So it will serve the purpose beautifully and Garrett is an amazing brand so needs no introduction. Today's progress is that we've managed to get the manifold chopped and uh, prepared to mount the turbo. The turbo is on, if you can bring the camera this side. So the turbo is on, that is the wastegate actuator right there. This is the output for the turbo. Uh, this is the input where it will be taking the air in from, uh, from the air filter. So it is going to pump out air that side. We finished fabrication of this piece. So this is going to go in there and get fixed in this side. So this will carry fresh air that we are pumping right into the air intake uh, manifold. This has a beautiful plenum design. So it will be going into the plenum for this one. Also, the biggest progress that has happened today is that we've managed to uh, make these beautiful uh, oil supply lines. This is the feed line. This is the line that pumps oil from the engine to uh, the turbo. And this is this has been bent to the size and it, I think this is better than any braided or any other lines that people use. This will be welded to a banjo and it is going to be secured into the turbo. I'll also show you where uh, it sits on the turbo later on. This, the bigger uh, bore pipe is the return. This is going to go into the engine back again. Basically, you, don't, you never leave oil in the turbo. It is going to be pumped into the turbo, cool it down, keep it lubricated, and it is going to go out again. So I'll pull off this pipe. If you can bring the camera this side. So these little tabs uh, that you see, uh, you, you, so these little tabs, uh, they take oil in and out both. So two of them are still covered. So if you can uh, actually make out, it has a total of four tabs. So two are for water and two are for oil. So these turbos by Garrett have the provision to be cooled by both water and oil. Uh, had this vehicle had an EGR cooler, we could have routed the EGR cooler pipes into the water inlet and outlet as well. But uh, since it doesn't have an EGR, we'll be only running the oil cooler pipes. The other ones will be plugged with a bung and that's about it. So this is the progress for today. We are also in process of finalizing a 3-inch uh, almost straight pipe exhaust with a single resonator, which is actually going to complement the, uh, the increase in power and the exhaust outflow. So that work starts in a couple of days once the turbo install is over. We should be cranking the vehicle by tomorrow, I hope, on the same pump. And after it has started and is running smooth, we will be upgrading the pump as well. So I think in the next video, you can expect me to show you the dismantled pump and the installation of new elements. So I'll, I'll keep you posted. Thank you. This, I feel, is going to be the most important update on the turbo install. Almost everything is in place. Uh, the pump side, we've not touched as of now. We'll get it running like this, get the exhaust completed. And then the pump has to be disassembled and sent away for a rebuild. For the plunger size has to be increased. I'll take that up in detail and I'll discuss that. Uh, for now, if you can bring the camera here, I'll quickly show you what we've done. We've retained the stock airbox. We decided to go ahead with the stock airbox because 
Firstly, the placement was very good and bigger models of Mercedes are also using the same air, air filter. What we'll do is we'll probably switch over to a box replacement air filter. k and and a few other brands, they do all of them. BMC also does it. But uh, for now, we'll run it like this with the stock pump. Uh, this has 5.5 elements. We'll start it with that, get it running, get the exhaust completed and then we'll move on step by step. So the other option is to go in for a big conical air filter, which I personally am not much in favor of because they tend to choke very, very quickly. So, but for now, the air sensor will be retained. We've retained the stock uh, inlet pipe. The air filter is in the, in the right place. This, the turbo is now in position. It has been placed beautifully and I don't think we've got space to fit a bigger turbo here until unless we bring it up. Or we do a conical filter with a with a uh, with a new uh, turbo placement. So this is going to go uh, that way, uh, or this will go the other way. Yeah. So this is the position. So this is going to go there, and uh, the inlet will get completed. This was the crankcase breather, which is a stock fitment on the OM uh, 605. So I think we spent the entire uh, yesterday completing these little buttons that you can see. So these were specially machined, turned on the lathe and prepared to act as closure bungs for the 10 inlets. So basically what was happening was the crankcase breather was going into this little catch can and that was going into 10 different pipes into the inlet, which is good for the emissions and all. But uh, now what we've done is that has been bypassed out. We have the provision of putting this in the air inlet or we put a we put a crankcase breather filter and we let it out into the open. I think I'll be letting it out into the open. We don't want uh, fumes and oil going into the turbo again. So that being it, I try to record once we get it running and uh, everything else is assembled and in place. So uh, once we have it running, I will we'll do another video. Thank you.